When you've been an artist for any great length of time, you're going to wind up with a lot of pieces of art that need to be stored. They can be finished pieces or framed prints, but there's nothing worse than selling a piece and then finding out it had been damaged in storage, or that that very expensive frame you put on that piece has been damaged in storage. In this video, I'm gonna share with you a few different ways that I've found to solve this problem of how to store and handle artwork. Hi, my name is James Owens and I've been a working artist for over 35 years. On this channel, I share with you the techniques, tips, hacks, and history to help you become a better artist. A few weeks ago, I got a text from a collector who wanted to know how I store art. Now this can be a real problem if you have multiple pieces of art but have run out of space on your walls for display. And to the artist, your finished art and your prints represent a big investment of your time, but not only your time, it also represents a big monetary investment as well. The average civilian, non-artist, has no clue how much framing can cost. Well, there goes 300 bucks. Now, the best way to store your pieces, especially ones that are framed like this one, is to stand it in an upright vertical position leaning on one edge. This keeps the surface from being rubbed as they would be if you were stacking them horizontally like this. The best solution that I've come up with that not only suits our needs, but is infinitely customizable, as well as you can break it down to move it if need be, is the IKEA Hengi. Hengi. Hinge? 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 Hang? Hang? Hinge? Hang? Hengi? Hinge? 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 Hing? Hing? Hinge? IKEA bookcases. These things are great, not only because they can be assembled in multiple configurations, but they're dirt cheap too, and cheap is our friend. Now, here's the trick. We're not gonna set these up like normal, where you would have a wide but shallow shelf. We're gonna set them up face to face so that we have a narrow but very deep shelf. Now this is perfect for our needs because it allows us to slide a painting in and lean it, keeping it safe and clean until it's needed. Now this is great that you can buy these pieces separately, the legs, the shelves, and assemble it in any configuration you may need. All in all, this is a great investment to your work considering how cheap these babies are. Now a big plus is that you can pick these up little by little and build out your storage as you can afford it. Not only can you store stuff on the shelves, but you can store box goods up top. Hey guys, stick around to the end of the video for a bonus tip on how to transport your art. Oh, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that bell so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos. That helps me grow the channel. <laughs> Storing art is one thing, but transporting art is a whole nother ball game. Every time you move a piece of art, you're taking the risk of damaging it. Take, for instance, the Barrett Jackson auction where I sell my hot rod art. It wouldn't be unusual for me to bring and display two dozen framed pieces of work, as well as unframed paper prints. Now, but here's the thing. You're not just packing and transporting art to these shows. You're packing and transporting the art. You're packing and transporting display walls, possibly a tent, point of purchase countertop and table, um, chairs, a cooler, extra clothing, food. When you start packing all this stuff into a vehicle, the chances of damaging a piece of art goes way up. Over the years, I've tried many different solutions for keeping art safe while transporting it, including bubble wrapping. You bubble wrap the piece, you add the cardboard corners, and everything's Jake. The problem is, it takes a long time to wrap each piece, especially when the tape is old and it's sticking to itself and it's sticking to the, the bubble wrap, and it takes a long time to rewrap it once the piece is sold for you to give it to the customer to take away with them. So all in all, bubble wrap and cardboard corners, they are great protection, but for our needs, they're just not very convenient. I've also tried using the foam pipe wrap you get at the hardware store. Now this foam pipe wrap looks just like one of those colored pool noodles, but it comes with a slit up the side and you just cut it to the length of your frame and you slip it over the frame and it acts like a bumper. Now these are great 
But the problem is you have to store them once you get to the show. And in a lot of these shows, you don't have much storage space. Now the best solution that I've found is to sew up felt bags. And you can sew these at any size that you need for whatever size painting you have. And now I buy this material by the bolt because here in the United States, we have a place called Joanne Fabrics and they quite often will issue a 50 or 60% off coupon. And if you buy this uncut, it's one piece and you get 60% off. So I buy this all the time, sew up the bags to the size that I need and they protect it very well in transporting. Plus, an added bonus is that these fold up very small for storage once you get to the show. Now, because the bags are all different sizes, I like to pin the name of the piece to the bag. This makes for quick identification uh, when I'm storing them. Also, when I get to the show, I can slip it out of the bag, hang it on the wall, and then I can fold the bag up and stash these in a box under my table in roughly alphabetical order. Now this is great because when a customer purchases a piece, I can quickly locate the bag, pop the painting in the bag, and the customer's on their way. These are so inexpensive that I don't mind giving them away with every original piece sold. And besides that, it looks very professional and it protects the painting while your customer gets it to their home and onto their wall. Next up, the humble flat file. No, not that kind this kind. Flat files are great for storing any kind of flat media, from original works to prints to sketches and drawings to ink work, as well as materials such as matting supplies or paper stock. Now these do take up a lot of space, but if you can spare the space, you won't regret having a set or two of these around. Now they can be a little bit expensive, but if you keep your eyes peeled on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, um, OfferUp, you can still find some smoking deals. I've even seen sets out there offered for free. They just wanted to get rid of them. So keep your eyes peeled and I'm sure you'll find something that won't break the bank. And now for that bonus tip. Bonus, 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 bonus time. As I said before, every time you move a piece of art, you risk damaging it. And loading pieces in the van one at a time, well, that's just a pain in the rump. So my solution? I built a lightweight rolling cart. I made a couple of these out of plywood. I cut relief holes for weight and to act as handles. This allows me to roll up a ramp into my van and roll down a ramp right into my booth as I set up at a show. I only need to handle each piece when I hang it or take it down. All other times, it stays in the cart. I want to thank you for watching this video, and I really do hope that you picked up some cool tips or learned a little something. And hey, if you've got any great tips on how to store or transport art that you'd like to share, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments. So until next time, go make something cool. Owen's out.